Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from AzureAutomation.com and today I am very happy to see you again in our EA Weekly. And today we have a very popular person who is going to be talking with us in our Azure Automation Weekly who is Iran from Perfecto who has, I guess you have never missed his lot of comments and posts in LinkedIn as well as in the community who is not just a guy who is working for a company rather he is an author for a couple of books he has written on DevOps so we are going to be talking with Iran today and he is going to be shedding some of the lights for the future of automation testing in artificial intelligence and also Iran is going to be revealing their artificial intelligence based product release in this particular video. So again a lot of companies are releasing artificial intelligence based tool and Iran is going to be shedding some of the lights on their products which is going to be releasing to the market pretty soon and so you can just go and sign up with there and then you can see how awesome the tool is for making the life of our automation testers much easier with the artificial intelligence based tools. And again guys I have not really seen the tool personally because it's going to be a new tool which is going to be coming by tomorrow in the market or maybe it's even released by the time this video is going to be released. So but if you have some time just go ahead and sign up and try out the product how it looks like and I guess we are going to be inviting Iran in future videos who is going to be walking through us on their newest product which is going to be launched in the market pretty soon. So let's talk with Iran then. Hi guys, uh, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and today I'm very happy and excited to have Iran uh, from Perfecto. So we are pretty uh, lucky to have Iran here with us uh, who is going to uh, talk to us some of the futuristic things which is, uh, which is something we have not discussed ever in Exit Automation and uh, this is really a humble uh, request that we asked from Iran and uh, Iran is humble enough to spare his precious time with us which is really really cool so thank you very much uh, guys for uh, for viewing this video and I thank you very much Iran for spending your time so over to you Iran I'm not going to take any time from you now oh sure uh, hi everyone and uh, thank you Karthik for his ma uh, for uh, inviting me uh, to this execute automation uh, uh, the pleasure and honor is all mine and uh, as you mentioned I'm happy to talk about something which is, uh, I know, half of the future. Uh, some of the components and things that uh, I'm going to talk about are actually available today, but still maturing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, happy to be here with you. Great, great. So it's more like uh, futuristic things, uh, which is fine. Uh, that's what we are actually looking for. And we are, uh, uh, are going to hear everything from the experts like you. All right. So thank you so much, Jiran, for your time again. Sure. Please go ahead. So um, uh, just uh, for those of you uh, who are not familiar with uh, uh, me, I'm going to uh, share my slide and say just a few words about who I am and uh, why I'm here and talking to you guys. Uh, let me know, Kartik, when you can see my screen. All right, there you go. Looks good? All good. Cool. Excellent. So today's topic, uh, I, I want to introduce uh, or actually provide uh, uh, the guys uh, that are watching us uh, some insights about how you can future-proof your skills and knowledge uh, in the area of uh, artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, and also chatbots, because these things are uh, soon to become reality and uh, are here to, uh, A, improve our daily activities, uh, and, uh, you know, test automation creation, but also, uh, you know, provide some opportunities for those of you who are not really deep into test automation, and I will explain soon what I mean by all of this. Uh, before I start, um, I will just uh, say a word about myself. So for those of you who are not familiar with uh, me, uh, I'm the chief evangelist and also author at Perfecto. I'm a blogger, speaker in most of the testing conferences uh, around the globe, not just in the US. Uh, almost 20 years in this industry, uh, I'm the author of these two books, uh, available on Amazon, Kindle uh, as well, uh, Digital Quality Handbook, Continuous Testing for DevOps Professionals. 
Uh, if you are interested, you can find me all over the place on Twitter. That's my blog, and uh, that's uh, the website. I work for Perfecto. Perfecto is a Perfos company, uh, and we are a cloud-based solution for testing mobile native application as well as desktop web, responsive web, and progressive web applications all in the cloud across the globe. Uh, this cloud and testing tool supports almost all the traditional testing frameworks that and uh, you know your audience are familiar with like selenium appium and the other tools but also things around you know cordless test automation based on machine learning and I will soon explain what I mean by that as well so with that let's jump jump into you know my uh, uh, session and uh, first I will probably define you know the basic terms of AI and machine learning uh, and try to put them in the context of testing. Uh, I would explain, you know, continuous testing in DevOps, what it means. I, di I didn't just write a book about that. Uh, this is the reality today. Uh, if you are marching towards DevOps, uh, you need to have continuous testing in your organization. And from my experience, it's kind of uh, easier said than done. Uh, it's very complicated to mature your continuous testing because it relies on very robust test automation. And when you bundle in this challenge, also the digital transformation that covers mobile and web, uh, it's, it's a challenge. And there are ways to mature that. Some of the things are involving, by the way, this topic from today, like machine learning, AI, and other smart tools and algorithms. Uh, the main portion of this session is uh, to explain to you guys uh, how machine learning and AI are best positioned today and in the future to make test automation less painful and also more, uh, I would say, cost effective and productive. Uh, I will touch, you know, in a very high level, this is not a tool vendor or uh, any kind of tool pitch to you guys. I will just describe the landscape as it is today which tools today and how they use machine learning and AI. Uh, so if you have a challenge today around test automation, you know, visual testing, object uh, identification, uh, some of these tools might be useful for you already today out of the shelf. Some of them are open source, some of them are commercial, but still uh, it's good to know how the tool uh, tools landscape looks like today as we uh, mature 2019 and uh, onwards. So let's define a very high level, you know, AI, everyone talks about AI and machine learning. I think that for us as test engineers, test automation uh, and developers, uh, it has different meanings, uh, you know, it has different context, uh, but in a nutshell, artificial intelligence uh, as it is, sometimes it's called machine intelligence, is uh, the ability or the enablement of machines uh, through software to perform things that, you know, uh, us as humans uh, are used to do. Things like, you know, uh, think about from a testing perspective, you want to perform a full login scenario for your mobile banking application. A mature AI algorithm can actually uh, identify that that's a login screen without you teaching or training it and uh, create for you a full test automation scenario end to end by just giving it access to the application on a device. So that's a very mature way of looking at artificial intelligence because we as humans know how, uh, where we are on the screen. We know that this is the login screen. We know that we need to uh, enter the username and the password and click on the submit or on the login button. Uh, when you are dealing with AI that is trying to mimic us as human, uh, this is where AI in test automation in the future, it's not relevant today, can actually perform everything to you out of the box. Machine learning, I would say, is a different way of looking at uh, smart algorithms to do uh, human-related things, but uh, today, machine learning, uh, in my mind, and based on the use cases that I've done research on, uh, are mostly algorithms which are giving a statistic answer or a set of answers to well-defined questions, okay? And this is based on uh, mature training, uh, working with large databases, and so forth. And this involves more human-like interaction, so it's not a self-served thing. 
And also, machine learning is not a, a holistic solution for everything that you want. So there are machine learning uh, algorithms, and each algorithm would have is unique uh, addressing of a problem. Okay, so uh, you can find a solution that has several machine learning based algorithms solving different problems. And upon the end of this session, you will understand how specific machine learning algorithms are baked into test solutions, test frameworks uh, to provide specific answers for specific challenges or problems. So before we actually talk about machine learning and AI, uh, I'll give my uh, way of thinking about what is continuous testing. I think that uh, continuous testing actually is one of the drivers of machine learning and AI within test automation, because today test automation teams, and I've been in, uh, a week and a half ago in a conference in uh, uh, Columbus, Ohio, called QA or the highway, and I was asking the audience, you know, how well is your test automation success rate percentage? And I got, you know, 50 to 60% test automation that they can trust. This leaves 40% testing either done manually or worse, not even performed because the pace of releases in DevOps is very high. So when you want to mature DevOps, you can't really accept a reality where you have 40% of your test cases manual or 50 and 60% automated, which are not very highly trusted. So you need something much more robust, much more mature. And today, with all due respect, you know, to Selenium and Appium, and I use these frameworks, and I uh, share my full respects uh, to the, the open source community, these are excellent frameworks. But still, with the current skills that is out there, with the current complexity that applications are introducing to these frameworks, these uh, frameworks come or fall short in solving all of the automation challenges. So in, with that, let's focus, okay, what is continuous testing? Continuous testing means that you have the ability as a DevOps team or an agile team, uh, depending on your maturity, to assess risks that are associated with your code changes, okay? It's not talking about having 100% test automation. That's not the, the, the definition of continuous testing. It's all about risk mitigation, being able to address software-related risks and release software with confidence, okay? To do so, you need to be able to automate the key business transactions as soon as possible as code is being developed and produce fast feedback back to your developers so they can uh, get decisions, quality and data-driven decisions, okay? And if you do it, yeah, cool. go ahead, Kartik, yeah. No, so what we are uh, what we are uh, getting out from this discussion is that continuous testing is especially not just about you know testing the whole uh, application you know, complete end to end automation. Rather, it is addressing the major problem the application has, even though it is not automated fully. It has to address some of the major stuffs, which is something completely not uh, addressed at all. Of course, it? that's a, exactly it. And the reason for that is you you don't have the time to to test. Everything, every day, every hour, every, you know, uh, CI, every build that you're doing. So you need to be able to focus on the most relevant uh, key business transactions for that. And this, by the way, leaves you time to do that automation that you want. But still, this automation is quite hard, especially when you are doing it uh, in an iterative mode after each code change. So that's the basic definition of continuous testing uh, and trying to put, you know, a, a tag of 100% test automation is simply unrealistic uh, regardless of your skill set. So with that, you know, uh, what I've identified uh, and feel free uh, to jump in, Kartik, if you see something different, I've ad identified in every squad, uh, in an agile team, also looking at what Perfect or my company is doing, and we are also a DevOps shop. Uh, we uh, uh, do a lot of uh, microservices development. We work in squads, different squads. We are releasing uh, in a continuous delivery fashion. And what we have learned is that there are three main personas uh, or practitioners that are involved in the overall continuous testing uh, flows. And the one uh, major 
player, if you like, is the business tester. The business tester is the uh, is the tester who knows the application uh, back and forth and is a very ex is a strong expert in all the business scenarios that the application exposes. He's great at exploratory testing, but is focusing mostly on manual testing. He has less of the coding skills uh, that a test automation engineer or a developer will have. So this uh, persona will typically either uh, write BDD test scenarios in uh, Gherkin or will perform manual testing based on you know a web uh, document or an Excel spreadsheet or whatever. Uh, and that's the, the, the first persona. The second one is the SD. This is the most uh, mature test automation engineer. Sometimes it can be also a test automation architect. And this guy knows how to write Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, Perl, Python, whatever language that, you know, Selenium WebDriver or Appium uh, supports. And he's good at that. Okay. And he will work closely with the developer, the software developer that is either doing unit tests and build acceptance testing or also supporting the functional testing in different, um, you know, verticals in mature organizations. You will see the developer actually doing also functional test automation using frameworks such as XCUI test for mobile iOS or uh, Espresso for Android uh, and, and so forth. So in a nutshell, these are the three players. These are the three um, personas that are involved in continuous testing uh, in a DevOps, in a squad. Uh, but, and that's a big one, um, you know, the majority, uh, if you look at the scale of the team, you know, how the team is distributed, you will see that there are much more manual resources then software test automation engineer, and there are many reasons. There can be reasons that are financial. The cost of SDET is higher than a manual tester, uh, or there are other reasons as well. My say or my belief is that uh, this, while these three are working in the same team, business testers cannot continue focusing just on manual testing, and they need to be part of the DevOps cycle. They need to support test automation within the CI, and they can do so either with this BDD concept or, as I will uh, prove in the next uh, couple of slides, they can actually uh, jump and be the early adopters of codeless test automation that is based on, <clears throat> sorry, machine learning and artificial intelligence. So we have here a strong opportunity for business testers in 2019 to become champions in their organization and match their, I would say, importance and voice within the overall team as test automation developers like any other uh, engineer. Uh, but in addition, they can actually uh, go back and uh, provide additional insights because, as I mentioned in the beginning, these guys know much more about the application uh, business flows, scenarios than the developers. The developers focus on units, on specific pieces. These guys are experts in the, in the process, in the application, and they're in touch with the business units. So think about that, that you build on top of their capabilities and knowledge, test automation skills using Codeless and other tools, they can become very, very important or even more important than today uh, if they embrace this uh, future of machine learning. Cool. So basically, uh, we're going to get like two in one of having both the testing skill set, uh, uh, testing feature, along with their actual business domain knowledge mixed together in one single suite, something like that, so that they can add a lot of value to the company so that the delivery will be more faster. That's what you're trying to say. That's cool. Yeah, I, I, I think this is uh, cool because uh, uh, all these days, people like business analysts, they just write the Gherkin BDD scenarios in the Jira or all in the continuous integration system. Yeah. They just write it down, but the implementation actually goes to the developers or manual test engineers to, you know, do the manual testing and the automation test engineer to do the automation test cases. But, uh, but most of the time we either fall short with understanding the business knowledge, like what is the actual functionality of the app and how to do the automation by going back and forth and asking the question to them. But this guy is like business uh, testers is a new terminology, I guess they can do both business as well as testing related stuff together, which is a fusion. Yeah, yeah. and I, cool. I think that's a win-win. And uh, they can become uh, more important today. 
uh, you know, the prestige uh, is going mostly to, towards the SDET and the software developers, leaving the traditional QA that can now become, you know, more business testers with test automation skills in their hands. Uh, important, uh, I would say, again, because in the past, these guys, uh, they were called traditional QA. They were the voice of the customer. They were the ones signing off releases. Today, with the agile and DevOps transformation, uh, SDETs and software developers are taking, you know, most of the power and leaving these guys a bit, you know, uh, aside. So we have here an opportunity uh, for these guys to become, you know, champions uh, in the agile team or DevOps teams. Uh, and I haven't seen it in the past few years because of the DevOps transformation. Cool, cool. And I have one small uh, question here. Like, we have business testers, SDT, and software developers. But most of the times, the DevOps who actually do the deployment of the application on the uh, on the cloud services or maybe something like that in the Azure or AWS, they also do some sort of testing before they actually get into uh, before they actually release the product. So they do some sort of sanity testing uh, before even it comes to developers or testers. So do you think that these AI artificial intelligence based record and playback tools like the testing code which is written by business testers can be used by these devops guys before they actually of go course, to the of course of course uh, these tools uh, will and, and some already have today full access and full capabilities uh, maybe not 100% yet but they have the capabilities to uh, support and uh, add value to these devops guys as well so uh, by all means, you know, the DevOps engineers or these guys are not really con uh, perceived as testers, but this, does, this doesn't mean that they cannot become player here and leverage some of the tools or, you know, even they can become customers of these business testers or the SDETs and get some support from them as well. I, I, I have nothing against that as well. So it's another, another option. Cool, cool. So it's basically it's like a reusability in the f initial and at the end of the product development yeah. and testing yeah. phases. That's cool. So, so now that we know that we have awesome. these three main uh, testers and developers and as that, um, just let's put today's reality because you know we talked about DevOps. We need to have continuous testing, perhaps not 100% test automation, but a large amount of test automation for the right scenarios. Uh, what we are seeing today is that you know. While developers, DevOps engineers, as you mentioned, Kartik, a few moments ago, they all figured out, you know, the flow. Everything needs to be continuous. You have the planning, the monitoring, operation, everything is fine. But still, because of the reality of the 50%, 40%, uh, in some cases even lower, of test automation, testing is slowing down uh, DevOps maturity. We don't see huge amount of uh, adoption for DevOps. You are seeing aims to, to adopt DevOps and be there, but reality shows that Testing, uh, and it's not just me who says that. We know that Gartner and Forrester and some of the enterprise customers that I am uh, engaging with on a daily basis, their uh, main goal, objective is to be DevOps ready, to be in a DevOps stage where they can deliver continuously uh, their software and innovation. But they are saying the same thing. Testing is holding us back. They cannot release with confidence because everything today is digital. The risks are high if you release something that is not well tested. But we have a low percentage of test automation. And this leaves or puts them, you know, back in the early stages of Agile uh, because they cannot really release uh, the cadence that they are trying to. Uh, and the, the, end, the end result of this reality is that testing is done either towards the end of the cycle, leaving the developers waiting for feedback. Uh, it impacts everything. It, uh, you know, all innovation. QA isn't part of the daily things because it just waits for the software to be ready and they are doing a lot of slow manual testing or working with flaky test automation that uh, is unstable. It causes also personal conflicts. There is low trust of test automation within the dev team. So when something is being broken or a defect is being submitted, People are, you know, doubting the re relevancy of these results. So that's the reality today, and I see it in many organizations. And going back to the to the three personas in the previous slide, that's 
the opportunity today for these three players to work together towards uh, synchronizing and optimizing all of these testing activities throughout the DevOps cycle. At the end of the day, everything needs to play in an automated fashion within the continuous integration flow uh, through Jenkins or other server that is being used. Um, just an example, if you don't take my word uh, from, from the previous slide, uh, you know, this is uh, the native mobile application of Bank of America. You can see some of the complexities that developers and test automation engineers are facing. Uh, logging into this banking application has three options, or at least two options. You know, you have the user ID and password. You have the, the uh, saving of the on online ID. You have the face ID, the face recognition, if you're using an iPhone X, XS, and above. Okay? Uh, and, oh, by the way, when you are testing it, you need to make sure that you have access to the to the object ID, okay, like I'm showing here. Uh, that's the label. And you need to make sure that you're also testing against the latest software that uh, Apple is or uh, Google are releasing. And often people neglect that. They don't even uh, follow the, the innovation in the market, and they are testing this application, making, uh, you know, assuming that everything is up to date, but they're actually wasting their time because they're not testing against the latest version uh, of, of the mobile operating system. Sometimes the device is locked. They cannot even launch the application because the screen was locked after a specific timeout. Okay, So these are some of the reasons, some of the real-life examples where continuous testing can sl slow down everything because if you don't have access from the main screen to the application, if you're not identifying the right object ID, if you're not testing against the latest mobile operating system, that's when you are failing the process. Correct. Yes. I actually, I feel like this uh, many times because every time, like every two months or three times once, like Google or Apple, they release yeah. new updates to their phone. But we test the application against one of the oldest build of the of the devices. Sometimes we don't even test in the actual device. Sometimes we test on the emulators and we fall short with the actual uh, behavior of the applications when yeah. it goes to the real uh, device. So I guess, yeah, these are some of the things which we are always missing. It's yeah. pretty much like the cross-browser testing. Like browsers, you we do testing with Chrome, IE, and Edge or something like that. But we always test with some of the browser that we have installed in our machine, sometimes the latest version. But the application sometimes breaks with one version lower yeah. uh, or something and like that. And uh, today, right? you know, this week so, yeah. uh, we found out, you know, uh, about the new generation of smartphones, right? The foldable devices from Samsung and Huawei. Uh, today, you know, in Perfecto, we announced support for the uh, entire series of the three Samsung S10 devices. Okay, this, so these three Samsung Android devices, uh, you know, they are new uh, beasts in the market. You cannot avoid not testing against the number one and Android player in the industry. And assuming that things will work for you on the emulator, uh, I've been there for the last 20 years. Emulators are fine in the early development stages. They can help you. It's fine. But when you're trying uh, to test against real user environments, real user conditions, you know, these banking users are not uh, checking their balance on an emulator. They're che checking that on a real device. You cannot go and perform a full cycle of testing without involving real devices and the latest of them. So that, that's the reality. Whoever is, you know, uh, in the notion of, yeah, uh, I'm test, uh, testing on emulators that are available for my Xcode or my, um, you know, IntelliJ, and I'm fine, uh, they will have surprises in production at the end of the day. So now that I scared everyone that uh, things are hard, you know, it's not, <coughs> it's not that hard. Uh, that's my belief. Uh, again, uh, it's also uh, part of uh, things that I've uh, described in my book. You know, there is a clear path towards continuous testing. Again, it's not about the quantity of the test automation that you write. It's about the quality of these scripts, the reliability, and the high trust that you can get through the development of these test cases and also the feedback that they will deliver back to the developers and test engineers. So. Basically, 
teams today are okay I mean yeah let's automate everything uh, they put you know one month two months effort they automate everything then they put it into the CI they execute things fail they go back they do refactoring reverse engineering debugging but then the application already changed and it's an it's a chase that has no ending you know opposed to that there is a very simple process when you're looking to build very stable automation you should start small by the way that's no uh, that's a known fact and a best practice in life start small with everything that you are doing make sure that you have a solid ground build on top of that include it in your daily cycle make sure that you get consistent results once you got consistent results you you gain trust in your test automation foundation in your frameworks okay then build on top of this reliable uh, set of suites or test scenarios additional coverage okay then when that's when you are entering the devops friendly zone as we call it uh, and okay you can reach 95% you can reach 85% again don't uh, you know uh, lock yourself on the number lock yourself on the value of the test cases and the business uh, scenarios that are important to your customers uh, then you know, in these phases three, four, and five, and five uh, this is where you can support the DevOps machine, the DevOps uh, workflow that we have seen and we are all familiar with, but it relies on a very stable and high trusted test automation that needs to be built very strong from the, you know, bottoms up uh, against, by the way, a very strong lab, okay? I've demonstrated in the previous slide, you know, how a device which is un uh, you know, um, not up to date or outdated and doesn't, you know, uh, provide you the latest feedback from your test cases can interfere with the overall process. So it's not about just building the right test automation script, uh, which are stable and robust and can run within CI. It's also where you execute your test cases and it needs to be in a very, um, you know, robust and highly trusted lab. You can build it on your own uh, on your premise, you can use cloud vendors. Uh, I'm representing a cloud vendor, but I'm not the only one. Uh, I think the entire market today is all marching towards cloud uh, computing. Uh, look at Amazon and others because, you know, the, the stakes are so high and uh, the applications and the demands are so high that, you know, standalone or build it yourself solutions uh, cannot really scale towards or comparing to cloud solutions. Cloud have unlimited computing power. They, you have unlimited number of VMs that you can test your web applications against. You have all the devices that are always charged and available for you. This is not something that you can reach when you're doing it in, on your premise uh, on your own. If it's successful, it means that you invested way too much money and resources that you, know, you may have uh, targeted towards more innovation instead of managing your lab on premise. Okay, so that's a separate uh, topic, but it's very important because it supports the reliability of your test automation at the end of the day. So that's cutting in my mind, that's how good look like good look like from a process perspective, you know, building small, starting small, building trust, building on top of that and reaching the high level of uh, test automation. Again, not from a percentage perspective, but from a value perspective. And today, you know, with things like Selenium and Portractor and WebDriver.io or Appium and Espresso and XUITS, these are all great and they have a very solid positioning in the market and uh, people are using them. But, you know, I haven't seen any customers succeed in uh, uh, building 95% test automation of the right scripts with these frameworks. Why? Because of flakiness in object identification, changes to the app in production, uh, complex scenarios that these frameworks cannot really, you know, uh, reliably automate, okay? These are some of the reasons that we are seeing in open source frameworks that cannot really uh, bring you to this safety zone, to this DevOps friendly zone. And this is where machine learning and AI actually can complement. You can build a stable automation, build, I don't know, 45, 50% test automation coverage based on the open source frameworks and try and move the needle using the machine learning and the AI tools that I will soon introduce and uh, let you know how they can help you. So going to the interesting pieces now, 
So how can machine learning, uh, and when I'm talking machine learning and AI, most of the use cases uh, that I'm going to address are around test automation uh, via codeless testing. Uh, this is the current wave that I'm seeing, uh, naming, you know, Testcraft, Testing.io, uh, Mabel, Apply Tools, uh, the new Selenium open source IDE, right? Uh, and uh, Teaser, Perfecto is a player also in this domain. Uh, I will say a few words uh, during this presentation, but most of the vendors today understand that Codeless has a huge opportunity to, uh, you know, bring the business testers and some of the developers uh, into the table uh, by providing them tools to build highly trusted test automation that can complement the code-based testing that is now done by Appium and Selenium and the rest. So it's not, so it's not again, don't get me wrong, it's not uh, this all that, it's codeless plus code based towards high degree of automation towards continuous testing. That's my vision. That's how I believe the market should and actually going to look like in the next uh, few months towards 2020 as well. So, um, Kadi, codeless testing, have you had uh, trends about that? Have you run into th this kind of terms and uh, activities in your previous sessions with your uh, audiences? Actually, yes, we, uh, I have released an, an EA weekly about, uh, about cordless testing. Mainly I talked about supporting the record and playback with the, with the, with the tools like uh, test project, test cafe and these tools like they are and also test team uh, because i'm already talking with the with those guys uh, they are very very exciting tools because uh, they don't really actually complement the code full testing but the codeless testing based on uh, the way they do the record and playback and the way they are more matured enough not like earlier days while selenium ide was like the older selenium ide was like record something it just breaks automatically but these tools now automatically waits for the element to appear sometimes it even resolves like the test uh, testim.io it resolves with the ai so these things are really really fascinating and i guess the business uh, users the business yeah. testers that you mentioned earlier these people are really going to be getting benefited out of these kinds of tool and i i really strongly support uh, cordless uh, automation as well because that's going to be the future because that's what all these platforms like Testim or uh, uh, AI, uh, uh, what is the test.ai and Apply tools? These are they are building the ground actually. So I feel like that's that's where without a the doubt, without a doubt. Right and uh, you know the definition of cordless testing isn't new. You know its creation. It's the the, the definition is uh, as you read it in English. You know creating test automation without uh, writing uh, code in Java or other languages. But the main differences, and you started mentioning some of them, between the new wave of cordless testing tools and the previous wave that include, you know, tools, tools like HP UFT and the rest. So even the previous Selenium ID. So these tools were developing or in, enabling test automation engineers to develop static test automation scripts. Why do I mean? Uh, what do I mean by static? It means that if something changed you need to go back to the table and fix the script manually. Uh, the test cannot fix itself, okay? That's a static thing. And unfortunately, in today's world, everything is dynamic, okay? Application changes, objects changes, new flows are being added. We talked about continuous testing, about DevOps. People are innovating on a daily basis, okay? You cannot record a test case today and start fixing it tomorrow. You don't have the time for that. So you need to have the ability to script something that lasts, that can heal itself. So that's the record and playback is still the method that cordless testing is using. Uh, some of the tools are calling it a trainer. Some of the tools are just recording and playback, which is fine. The concept here is the same. The only difference is that you now have self-healing mechanism, and this is where machine learning and AI comes into play. When you're looking at uh, web uh, cordless solutions, you mentioned testim.io, uh, Testcraft and uh, soon to come Perfecto, uh, the ability to get access to the entire web DOM elements and simply provide a grade or a score to each element per object, per page, this is a huge thing that you didn't see in the past. So grading or rating all the objects per each page in the DOM 
allows the tools, once you are scripting, to simply use the high score on a dynamic basis. When you are recording something for the first time, you are generating a script, it's fine, no code involved. When you execute it for the second and third and fourth time, this is when the dynamic machine learning uh, capabilities and algorithms are being used to score and adjust, adjust the objects that you used uh, in the previous recording. Okay, so if an object ID, an XPath, uh, CSS, whatever you are using, changed from one execution to the other, from uh, a testing perspective, nothing will be broken. Okay, the script will self-heal itself. It will just use the next element or object ID uh, that has a, maybe a greater rating and score than the previous object that was used. But the high-level function that you used in your recording will maintain and continuously run uh, regardless of the changes. And that's a huge thing. And that feel, uh, actually, actually fits the continuous testing definition, okay? Nothing is being broken. You have the continuous feedback time after time after time, and you can build on top of that. That's the beauty of it. You can reuse objects. You can reuse functions that you recorded to maximize the test coverage. So if you go back to the five stages or the path towards continuous testing, you can start building smart test automation small in small pieces, in small chunks, and add on top of these more scenarios, more capabilities, and you will gain high trusted automation because of the self feeding. Yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah. Sorry, I, I sorry to interrupt. Like I have been working with this automation for like almost twelve years, uh thirteen years now. Like I started with the QTP uh and then uh it then it came test complete and then selenium and now many tools like all these tools have one thing in common which is object repository and yeah. maintaining the ui element right so it's it's getting an overhead every time like the application changes or if anything breaks or something like that every time we have to go back and revisit that particular page a page object model and then change all those things but here the self healing is something like a boon and i see the hand symbol which is very cool because it's like a boon to the human beings that all the testers guys you are ready to get out of all these problems that you have yeah. maintaining the objects right now because it's going to be taken yeah. care self automatically which is really cool because i i see the problems the the people are going through instead of testing the application they spend so much of time fixing the automation and this one is going to be really I, I, I beneficial totally thing. i think That's what the, I feel. the keyword that you mentioned is time okay time is the most expensive element in continuous testing in devops that engineers don't have, okay? They don't have the in, enough time, especially in today's reality, to build and maintain automation day in and day out. They want something that is highly trusted, that can run, that can self-maintain itself, so you get continuous feedback and you continuously innovate, okay? And that needs to be like a, an oiled machine. When it breaks something, you know, everything else stops because you are dependent on it. And, you know, these new tools that we mentioned, uh, nothing is new on, on the other fronts. You know, they support assertions. You can use conditions. It connects to reporting. It connects to the cloud solutions. It connects to Jenkins or other uh, CI tools. So you get all the benefits from the old uh, generation tools uh, that were cordless, plus the smart algorithms of self-maintenance, self-healing that enables you to boost test automation coverage, build the trust, and, you know, at the end of the day, complement the code-based testing that today simply reached some kind of a glass ceiling of 50-60% in the good cases, in some cases even worse. So think about all the other cases that business testers will put into the pile using codeless testing. When you match them one plus one, you actually get three here. You're getting uh, both uh, innovative skills that the business testers will win you're getting higher test automation coverage, highly trusted test automation, and at the end of the day, you are saving time and you're providing feedback on a timely basis. So that's the summary of it, okay? And that's the future, that's the future. So some of the, you know, I, I just a summary slide because I think we did a voiceover, me and you, uh, in a very uh, great way. Uh, so. 
Uh, in the left hand, you see that the previous recorders had limited capabilities. They were breaking easy. Scripting required coding skills, and it was demanding to maintain. In today's coderless automation, uh, such a, some tools we mentioned, you do not need to set up anything. It's easy to learn. Uh, you know, business testers will have an opportunity uh, to get a chance to develop test automation. They are self-feeding themselves uh, with smart AI and other machine learning capabilities. By the way, towards the end game, which will actually be self creation of test cases without even human intervention, okay? That will be the next wave of these tools when they can see an application and can automate it end-to-end -end, uh, just by looking at the screens from a visual perspective. And this will be awesome because, by the way, the ground is already there, the setup is already there. As we mentioned, the AI and machine learning tools today already have full access and visibility into all the objects, all the elements of the application. So just combining them together towards a meaningful end-to-end -end scenario is just a matter of time. So that's just a nice summary, uh, you know, balancing, optimizing today's landscape by taking the code-based tools on the left, on the, on the blue area, uh, the J unit of the world, Protractor, Postman, API testing, Selenium, Appium, Espresso, XUI test, and adding on top of that the layer of the Cucumber, which is less machine learning AI, it's still highly maintained, requires high maintenance, but take, you know, cordless solution from Perfecto, uh, testing.io, Selenium IDE, Apply tools, these tools, and suddenly you are uh, boosting test automation coverage, leaving still room for manual testing. Manual testing are important. Uh, and provide unique value, but they need to take like 5% of your time, 10% of your time uh, in an iteration. Uh, everything else needs to be automated and provide timely feedback. That's my reality. That's the future of test automation in my mind. Uh, that's how I see it. I think that's that's almost there. Yeah. Uh, that's that's exactly what's happening right now. Uh, we we have and to. And I think I'm seeing things. almost on yeah. a weekly basis a, a blog post or a question uh, in one of the forums. Okay, uh, there are machine learning tools. There are tools for developers. Is the QA role? Is the tester role disappearing from the world? No, that's the. You can see here. <laughs> uh, you're just no. optimizing the flow. <clears throat> you still need test automation engineer, good testers that understands how to break software, how software needs to look like, uh, but they need the right tools that matches their skill set. And at the end of the day, it's the combination of all these three layers into one uh, testing suite that, it, that can run in a reliable fashion uh, on demand. That's it. So. Yep, yep. I actually have to add uh, one small uh, sentence here, like uh, on the Rockwell Automation, the petroleum company, uh, there is a there is a uh, there is a guy, uh, I think he is the director of advanced technology, Rockwell Automation, he mentioned regarding the uh, uh, regarding the uh, losing of job based based on a AI and automation. So he mentioned that automation and advanced technologies will actually help to ensure employment and even increase the job and paying the job as manufacturing becomes more productive and successful and looks to hire more people who have skills in advanced manufacturing. So which means the job is not really going to be go away, rather it's going to enhance or enrich the people's life than what it is currently available. So I guess it's it's no fear for testers. No, no, they actually the have, I think I mentioned in, in the beginning, uh, testers have today an opportunity to shine and become the champions within the DevOps uh, you know, pipeline by, you know, taking over, taking control over this area and this area actually on, on, on taking over quality strategy. The quality strategy for an organization today, in my mind, must include these three tool chains and these th three tool chains uh, require three different skill sets. Okay. So um, that's, that's an uh, empowerment of testing, testing departments to take ownership, take control, and actually support and drive the business towards high quality in an agile reality. So with that, and I, I'm happy that we are in agreement. Uh, I was in a fear for a second. I like it that we are in agreement. And uh, let me just, uh, you know, in a very high level, just 
just throw it out there, you know, and I will share, I think, with you, Kartik, I, I will share the slides. So uh, if anyone wants to, you know, drill down deeper, because there are a lot of details here, but they're important details. So I just wanted to provide uh, the business testers, the ads that all the personas, you know, they just need to uh, march into this new evolution of testing uh, with their eyes open, because uh, the practices, the processes of developing using code-based tools like Selenium and Appium versus record and playback that is based on machine learning uh, and so forth uh, is different. So there are different processes, different practices. These are different tool sets and different, uh, you know, feedback that is going back to the developers and testers. So this just needs to be acknowledged. At the end of the day, uh, and we uh, at Perfecto, I can give it from a, a first-hand example, what we did, because we support Selenium and Appium, and now we support also the cordless testing. So we actually bundled all of these under one lab, providing at the end of the day, one single test results that can show you the Appium of the world, the Selenium, and the cordless in one place. Okay, regardless of the fact that uh, the authoring, the creation is done elsewhere in a, in, in a different process or flow than the code based. At the end of the day, the decision makers need to have only one single pane of glass. They only need to have one dashboard that shows the merge of both uh, test assets, test artifacts. So um, that's a very important um, insight that test managers, developers need to know, uh, even though in some cases it will be, okay, straightforward. It's straightforward, but when you're investing in these two different silos, these different two uh, tools and processes, uh, you need to understand that you will need to have some kind of a process around merging and, uh, you know, providing all the insights in, in one place. So you're not really uh, putting more obstacles in the way, but you're actually optimizing the process. That's the main benefit behind using codeless and code-based uh, testing. So uh, in this slide, you know, and the following, I'm just providing some of the differences between test authoring workflows and the skill set that is required, uh, the maintenance, you know, obviously the maintainability with self-feeding of codeless testing on the right hand is much easier than uh, maintaining, uh, you know, Git repositories, sharing repositories between different teams. So it's less complicated with codeless. Uh, same goes, you know, with the execution flow, the maturity of the tools, you know, codeless are, is less mature than code-based uh, frameworks. Still, uh, it's important to acknowledge that. And not all the testing types are supported today by cordless. That just goes back to the point, to the statement that you mentioned, Karthik, that the role of the tester is here and it's just being becoming more important because you have plenty of testing to do, functional, non-functional, API, security, performance. Uh, some is done by cordless, some is done by code-based. Uh, you need a merging of this. You need a brain, you need a human, uh, humans actually, and resources to manage everything in one place. So uh, with the time we have left, Kadik, if you allow me, I'll just say uh, half a word uh, per each tool, just so we know that, you know, uh, we're talking about the future, but some of it is already reality today. Uh, Testing.io, this is exactly the same feeling that we talked about earlier, allows you to uh, kind of, regardless of the changes made to the button, the tool can identify the changes and self-heal the script. So you can continuously run the exact same scenario uh, without really being aware of the changes. That's the, the smart thing that you don't have or didn't have in the previous uh, generation of, to of cordless tools like HP, QTP, and UFT. Uh, that's test team. It's mostly for web testing, uh, becoming uh, available for uh, mobile in beta version right now, as far as I understand. So it's maturing. That's one thing. Uh, Mabel. Uh, it's a bit newer tool, uh, also supporting web testing in the cloud as an add-on toward to the Chrome browser. So you can download the Chrome browser from the Chrome store uh, and use a trainer, Mabel trainer, to record and replay specific scripts. But they are also leveraging visual testing capabilities, machine learning algorithms to self-heal and provide you uh, a level of robustness in your test automation. Again, this is just web. 
Applitools are behind two solutions, the, Selenium, the new Selenium IDE that is now an add-on not just for Firefox, also for Chrome, and you have the visual testing uh, ability that is the core product uh, of Applitools visual testing uh, eyes that they are using with the dashboard and so forth. So it's also AI-driven uh, solution. Test.ai, uh, led by Jason Arbon, uh, also a good friend of mine, um, uh, is a, a mobile-specific, uh, more deep AI, by the way, than the previous tools, because here, actually, uh, Jason and his solution uh, learned a ton of uh, mobile native applications with visuals, so when they see a login uh, screen, when they see uh, a banking application across verticals, uh, it can easily identify the screen and sometimes create an end-to-end -end flow uh, that you can uh, build and by the way, they now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, supporting some kind of an Appium flavor of test.ai. So it's also uh, maturing on the mobile phone, not just the web. And lastly, uh, Perfecto. Perfecto also uh, introduced uh, recently the cordless Selenium, uh, which is also self-healing based uh, test automation for web. Uh, which you can tie into the other frameworks that we support, such as, uh, you know, Appium, Selenium, XUI, Test Espresso, uh, in the cloud, running uh, at scale on real devices, real desktop browsers, connecting to the CI, having a very machine learning uh, smart reporting at the end of the day that you can slice and dice data in, very, in a very easy manner. Um, uh, in the future, maybe uh, execute automation if you'd like. I can show even a demo or something. If not, you can go to our website, perfecto.io. You can learn more about that solution. But Perfecto is also part of the uh, wave of machine learning and AI, but it also complements the traditional code-based testing because it's still there and it's still going to be there. So we are trying to simply combine all the best of test automation solutions into one cloud-based solution to serve all the practitioners. Wow, that's cool. Uh, we, uh, I, I have never uh, seen uh, signing up because I have signed all the other uh, uh, other companies that you have showed me. Just Perfecto, I have to try. Like, uh, Is this a new yes. one? Is this coming out uh, yes, to people? Or? Oh, okay, we are cool. just launching so, it. Uh, for sure. And uh, from our website, Perfecto.io, you will be able to learn more about how to start using it. Uh, alongside your Selenium scripts. So if you don't, if you have Selenium scripts that work, you don't need to do anything. You can continue running them. But if you have the other uh, buckets of manual testing that you want to automate, you can just pull them into the cordless solution and just run them alongside the Selenium in the cloud. You don't need to set up any Selenium grid because we have it in our cloud. So uh, that's the easy part of, you know, ramping up test automation at scale. Yeah. And with that, you know, how to merge cordless testing, I wanted to summarize this talk by, you know, providing uh, some additional value because cordless is coming, it's the future, and it will run uh, alongside the code-based testing. So these are the, my five tips for you uh, as we uh, are about to close uh, this session. So my five recommendation is first to identify the manual and flaky test cases that are candidates to be used in cordless, okay? You need to make sure that you are marking them uh, using, uh, you know, tags or whatever uh, elements that you can think of uh, as cordless. That's how you can differentiate and make sure that you don't have any duplicates between the scripts that you run in Java and the ones that are cordless. Make sure that you record them in a smart manner. Uh, some of the tools already bake the smart elements inside with the self-feeding and object locators. But, you know, when you are developing the script, think about uh, scalability. You, we talked about starting small and growing. Build them with a flow-based and exploratory uh, state of mind so you can reuse them, build on top of them, and grow your test suite. Uh, and again, start. Uh, uh, don't neglect taggings for reporting and tracking purposes in the future. Obviously, you can and you should connect the cordless to the CI so they run with the code-based test automation and make sure that you identify uh, points in the evolution of testing and products so you maintain and fix the scripts if needed so you continuously re uh, maintain high-trusted 
test automation suite. Once you figured out these five things, you embrace code and codeless into one, I think you'll be in a very good and strong position to ma uh, mature your continuous testing in DevOps. Yeah, I, I guess so. It's it's really a, a really a great things to see everything combined in one single stuff so that we don't even lose our effort that we have put all these days writing the code. So we merge all of them together to have one full suite uh, for testing right, all of them. Right, yep. And uh, I, I put some more notes here. Uh, we, we can skip that. I think we mentioned them, you know, uh, machine learning, the future of testing is not here to take any uh, of our jobs or uh, damage our career. It's actually an opportunity for us to grow our career. Uh, as mentioned here, aid and fix things that we cannot do in an efficient way today. Uh, it solves specific things. It doesn't solve the entire problem. So you need to find what is the most complicated thing that you have today as part of your testing and see which machine learning AI algorithm or tools uh, that can solve uh, the thing and see where you can leverage it as part of the process. Some of the AI machine learning tools can actually improve processes that are uh, shaky or unreliable today. So also not, not just leverage it from a test automation perspective, but uh, from an entire process perspective, it's also an opportunity. And with that, I would just uh, end with saying, keep calm and learn machine learning. I think that's my uh, <laughs> message to you guys. And that, you know, if you have any questions um, uh, on top of that, I would be happy to answer, Kartik. Uh, I think, uh, Iran, whatever you have told us today is like really, really uh, much uh, efficient and much useful because we already had all the discussions, like questions that most of the communities we have, we have, uh, I have already addressed that, which is really cool. And uh, as that said, like if you could, uh, if in future, while well, you have time, uh, if you could also walk you walk us through like how the automation like AI based automation perfecto is going to be coming up and how uh, cool uh, differentiation it makes with the with the other uh, competitors. It's not just a competitor, but just to see nice thing like uh, what test team or other companies doesn't do and what perfecto differentiate them and how it exposes some of the APIs if there are uh, for the for the existing code full uh, code based testing like how we can leverage that if we have these options like advanced stuff which will be really really helpful for the community uh, to understand as well of course with pleasure with pleasure i had a great time to, uh, today with you Kartik. and again i appreciate the invite and uh, i hope to talk to you in the future sure thank you so much uh, iran it was a really great conversation thank you and you have a great day and thanks for your time once again you too thank you thank so that's it guys uh, thank you very much for watching this video and you would have seen how the future of automation testing is going to be changing with the artificial intelligence based testing tools and what you have to be doing in the artificial intelligence world where the automation testing is still waiting for the artificial intelligence to be matured enough for the testers to consume the AI so that they can use for their own work and as such it has not evolved yet for the automation testing but pretty soon we could see these tools that is coming to the market will eventually cope up all these problems and for sure the artificial intelligence is going to be the future of automation in testing in upcoming years once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day